Okay, hi. In this video, we will see how to upgrade AWS EKS cluster with using Terraform. Here, we will have an example EKS cluster at version 1.2.8. We will upgrade that EKS cluster to version 1.2.9, which is the next version, with using Terraform. Here, we will see that, you know, how does that application still remains intact or still remains functioning or working during AWS EKS cluster upgrade process. And also, the application will be still running after upgradation of EKS cluster. So here the main aim is to enable you how you need to take care of your application running on the EKS cluster while you are upgrading the you know the EKS cluster version on AWS EKS cluster. Now currently I am in my AWS account so where you see that my prod cluster is currently at version 1.2.8 and there is a warning message being shown here saying that there is a end of support period you know coming soon and aws is recommending you to upgrade this cluster as soon as possible so this cluster has a node group um, you know those node groups can be found in the in the compute option here so again right so um, so one more thing is you know so here in this cluster we have a three nodes uh, and all these nodes are running on on the eks ami version that is 1.2.8 which you can see in the in the you know in the, in the image path basically so if i can show you that here so that information that you can find it here in the in the details options so what do you what do i mean by here is you know so not only just upgrading the eks cluster you also need to upgrade the managed node groups as well so here you see that we have a managed node groups created with this eks um, ami new version so this also need to be upgraded so you also need to basically you have two steps one upgrade the aws eks cluster version upgrade the node uh, you know the image version as well so that the nodes are created out of latest image of the respective eks version plus you also need to upgrade the you know the add-ons you know configuration that you have added on your eks cluster right so these are all the steps you know we need to take care here now if i can take you to the my um, vs code so this is my vs code where i have defined the cluster desired state in the in the terraform basically this terraform defines how my eks cluster has to be created what are all the version has to be maintained on that one so all those definitions are being kept in this um, you know github repository no worries i'm going to share this github repository links from my videos description you can find it from there and try to replicate it so, you know from the when you are try to do this same thing from your eks cluster uh, same thing at your system basically so here um, so this is the main file which is actually has the certain modules like vpc we have a security group we have im roles and the eks cluster so basically these are all the modules that have been defined in the module folder here and then in the tf war says so you see that this is the master file called tf war file which is basically predefined or predeclared uh, you know the variable file so in in terraform you have a variables.tf where you declare the variable and the terraform tf war file is nothing but where you actually give the values of those you know the uh, variable files uh, of the variables of the terraform so here as you see here we have a instance count equal to 3 instance size is t2 micro region is this one so currently version is this one and then ami id is this is the ami id and then these are all the you know the vpc cni version so basically now we want to upgrade this version from 1.2.8 uh, to 1.2.9 so not only that we also need to change the values of you know basically ami id vpc cni and the q proxy so now I'm going to get you this information in a second. So I'm going to go on a, on a pause and come back with the required information here. Okay. I'm in, I'm in EC2 options. If you see that I'm in EC2 page, I went to AMI's option here in the underneath the image. I know the uh, option blade in that one. I have uh, filtered the public images of AMI containing this key string that is AKS Amazon hyphen EKS hyphen node dot one dot two dot nine. And then I am picking the AMI of the, of the latest uh, EKS AMI node here. So basically EKS AMI ID here. If you see that, you know, so this is the AMI ID which I am copying now. And uh, you see that the creation date is, is very recent. So I'm, we're going to choose that as well. So, so we have chosen that here in the, in the my uh, TFR file. So this is our next AMI ID through which we need to create the, you know, the nodes basically. Yeah, and then we need to also need the respective VPC CNI version and crew proxy version. So basically, to get these values, you know, I have one script called a shell script. Basically, uh, this is a PowerShell script. So here, what you need to do is you need to run this script with the version changing. So if you run this like this, 
that is change the version to 1.9 and here you know what you do is you're gonna get the data we're gonna get the respective data so what you do is you're gonna execute the scripts so i have created this script as a tool so that you can use it for your you know often purpose what happens is basically it will run an aktl command uh, with using this as a parameter and it will generate the result.json file so if i can open the existing result.json file this is the json file which contains the information of respective add-on versions which is suitable for the respective eks versions so we're going to run this uh, you know script which will actually uh, generate the you know the um, basically it will generate the new results.json file so we're going to go back to the code again so if you go to the code so we have the updated uh, result.json file so we're going to remove that unwanted options because here if you see here if you did the if you see the powershell script which is very straightforward that is nothing but getting the add-on descriptions which contains the respective add-ons version details and all and that output is printed into a result.json file which is i which is needed for me so that i can i know get the required uh, i know add-on version so this is my add-on version which we need to use if you go down you see that the compactible version you can see the compactible version that is 1.2.9 right so for vpc cni which is our add-on so i'm going to copy this uh, add-on version there um, into this uh, tf war file and we're going to replace it you know eventually and then similarly for cube proxy so you can find the cube proxy version somewhere like this if you go to the result.json file and try to find that cube proxy hyphen so you see that cube proxy so basically it also has an add-on version that is 1.2.9 and the compactable cluster version is 1.2.9 okay so this is what i needed so i'm going to copy that as well so we're going to put that information here as in the in the variable so what i'm going to do is I'm going to replace these values with the, this one. So basically, that's what I'm going to do it in a, in a while. So let me save it. Basically, I'm going to change the values and come back. Now, you see that we have changed the cluster version to 1.2.9. AMI ID is also changed. CNA version is changed. So basically, our cluster upgrade process is nothing but very easy here. We are just changing the TF war files to the latest version, you know, values. And eventually, the Terraform is managing the cluster upgradation on its own. So that is what it is happening here under the hood all right so now what i do is you know so before i run the terraform apply here i'm going to show you that you know we have an application running here on this eks cluster so that application definition is nothing but defined in this uh, simple uh, application.yaml file so this is the yaml file which actually deploys an application called nginx application it contains the three replicas and we are creating a service that is nginx service as well so we're going to access this application from this service and then I'm also creating a part disruption budget. So you know that part disruption budget is nothing but a kind of definition which will actually make sure that cluster maintains a certain number of part during the upgrade process so that it avoids the application downtime. So that is a part disruption budget we also defined you know, while deploying this application for this particular one. So now to show you that you know, this application is running in this cluster. So I'm going to what is I'm going to do the basically port forwarding and try to access the application in the in the computer in my laptop. So I'm going to do a port forwarding right away. And then we're going to access the application. Then we're going to start with the you know the upgradation process, right? So why do, why I'm doing this one so that you understand that there is an application already up you know running on the on the on the cluster. So if you see that we have a local host port number eighty eighty, where Nginx application is now accessible, which means that you know, our Nginx application is up and running fine. All right. So what we do is you know so now I'm going to start the uh, cluster upgradation process by doing a control c and what when i do a control c is nothing but you know you are stopping the port forwarding method and initiating the you know the uh, you know the terraform command so what i do is i'm going to run command called terraform apply here so when you do a terraform apply what happens is basically you know you are starting the uh, you know the you are you are actually starting the uh, the cluster upgradation process so let me run the command that is terraform apply so when you run a terraform apply basically what happens is you know it is not doing any kind of init apply init plan and, and and some other checks but you are directly hitting that you know yes go and apply these changes when it happens you see that you know it has calculating the back end state machines i have not explained you anything details but this is the repository where you can explore it and try to understand the setup remember that you know my remote state here is we are, i'm using s3 bucket and the dynamo db for this purpose just for your information now it is asking us to um, enter the value s so i'm entering the value remember that the cluster upgradation process will take nearby 5 to 10 minutes so we need to go on a pause to save the time so i'm going to go to the clusters now if i go to the clusters and and you see that you now if you refresh it here 
it should change the process called updating right so what does that mean upgrading is basically it is upgrading the kubernetes version so okay so let's wait um, you know so basically i'm going to go on a pause and parallel i'm going to show you that you know the application will be still running while the cluster upgradation is in progress okay now i have opened one more command prompt if i can show you that so there is a operation that is nothing but you know the cluster operation is in progress here cluster upgrade operation is in progress here in this in this um, um, you know the visual studio code terminal i have opened one more terminal if you see here i did aws configure and uh, check the aws configure context and then run the command that is aws eks update config using this cluster and then what i do is i'm doing a port forwarding from this console session so that i can show you that you know the uh, the application is still working so note that you know so what we are doing is we are parallelly doing so many things one one side the cluster upgrade is in progress the other side you are checking whether the parts are responding or not so how are you checking the parts are responding or not by checking the you know the service accessibility that is using the port forwarding method you see that the you know the our application is still intact i am keep refreshing it so which means that you know, we are getting the response in the sense welcome to the nginx is being served right and the in the other side so this is the port forwarding session which is in progress the other side the ekl cluster modification which is nothing but you know we are actually if you see here we are upgrading it from 2.8 1.2.8 to 1.2.9 and the respective node ami group is also being upgraded all right so one more thing i would like to highlight here is you know in the part disruption budget you see that minimum upgrade equal to 2 so that is something it balances the you know the uh, the application high availability during upgrade process automatically right and uh, so what we do is you know we now i have shown you that while it is upgrading it is waiting for it is the application is responding now we need to wait for this cluster upgrade to complete and node group also need to be upgraded to the latest eks ami based nodes right? and then i'm going to come back uh, and show you that you know the application is still works as expected all right, so let me uh, till that process. Let me go on a on a pause mode. After waiting for almost six minutes, if you see here, the uh, cluster modification got completed, which means that you know the cluster is now at version one dot two dot nine. So if I go to the my AWS account and go to the EKS service page, and we see that our cluster now reflecting at version one dot two dot nine, which means that you know the cluster. Um, you know the basically cluster version is upgraded or generally call it as a, the management layer of the EKS cluster got upgraded now so we have a one more component that is managed node groups has to be upgraded uh, to the latest version which means that you know the nodes present in that node group has to be upgraded with the latest AMIs which means you know the new no, new EC2 instances should be created and should be added as a node group so that is what going to happen now so if you see here currently the process is in progress it sees that node group modification is still in progress right and uh, one more good news is that you know it, it has modified basically um, you know the add-ons the add-ons like qproxy and then the the other add-ons right so basically the other add-ons is nothing but cni so that is looks like modified now as i said earlier so we have the another session running here so it looks like port forwarding got ended now let me again redo the port forwarding and we try to access the application that should be still running so that is what i want to show you here now let's go to the our local host port number 8080 uh, url and you see that the uh, application that is hosted in the eks cluster is still working right so now this is a real time demo that i'm showing you here that you know the one side the cluster upgradation is in progress the other side you know the i'm just keep checking the application health which is seems to be healthy now right so again we need to wait until the you know the worker node group upgradation gets completed and then we see that if we see that you know application is working fine which means that you know our cluster upgradation has went as expected till then this gets completed that is eks node groups upgradation gets completed i'm going to go on a pause while i was waiting for eks node group gets updated it's very interesting to show you here that you know the one of the node it got upgraded which means that you know we it has actually recreated a new worker node with the image that is nothing but latest uh, you know the eks version ami image and then this worker node is is pinned up you see that it is currently in a initialization uh, initializing uh, uh, you know the mode 
or installed in state but if you want to see that the image reference right so the image reference is coming from eks nodes 1 dot version 2 you see that so this is the uh, eks name right so and and the ami that we have added is now being used so i'm going to go you and, and show you that this is the ami which we have hard coded in the tf file so i'm going to show you here that this is the ami version which we declared all right again so this process is lengthy process and it's going to take some time meantime what you can do is you know you can keep checking the health of your application that is localhost dot uh, port number 8080 which is the application so in our case it is nginx application now again so you see that the process is still in progress so we need to go on a hold again and come back once it is gets completed okay so you see that here we have a three um, running instances which are present in the eks node groups and all those three instances are now in running state with using latest EKS EMI. That is a very good news. And uh, this is a last uh, worker node which is getting upgraded to the latest AMIs. Okay, that is nothing but EKS version 1.2.9. And uh, and the current status is in the initializing. And the AMI ID, this is the AMI ID which we tagged in the Terraform code. And the AMI name is as expected. Now, it is, why it is, while this process is happening, I'm going to show you that the application is still running. So if I refresh the our Nginx application that is listening on the port forwarding method, it is still working, right? So it is not in a, in, in, it didn't go down. So that is the best expected, you know, the thing during the EKS cluster upgradation, all right? So now again, so it will take again few more minutes. Um, so while that again, you know, so we're gonna go on a pause. So before I go to the pause, you see that you know there is a still logs are streaming. That is upgradation logs are still streaming through the Terraform apply command. So it will take another few minutes, and then uh, the cluster upgradation goes complete, and then we should see that the EKS application hosted on the version 1.2.8 is still running when the cluster upgrade is upgraded to version 1.2.9 all right so let me go on a pause and come back again okay after waiting for more than 31 minutes the cluster upgradation got completed with including eks node group upgradation as well you see that the status is apply complete where 4 is changed 0 destroyed and if I take you to my uh, AWS account, so if you see that we are in the Amazon EKS service page, and if I refresh it here, we see that the cluster version is now at 1.2.9. And then instances running here as well. So you see that the instances running. So we have four instances. Again, so backend node group, number of nodes alignment, you know, it will gonna take time, but all the nodes you see here are being upgraded to EKS version 1.2.9 and on the other side post upgradation as well the application that is our example application nginx on this eks cluster is up and running fine all right so with that option what did i show you here is basically you know so even though we did a cluster upgradation from um from version right so version 1.2.8 to 1.2.9 we see that the parts are still up, I know, up and running fine. Application was accessible throughout the process, and at the end of the process, also the application is up and running fine, which means that you know, under the hood, we have completed our natural upgradation process with using Terraform, but the application availability was still intact during the process. All right, so with that note, I have shown you the things need to be shown in this video. Finally, I can request please do subscribe my channel, that would really encourage me a lot. With that note, thank you, thanks a lot, and see you in the next video.